We Muslims will have no hesitation in accepting it. Simply because we know that Jesus Christ, as one of the mightiest messengers of God, he would never lie. The questions being asked, either he was a liar, you know, generally the Christians, he must be a liar or a lunatic or God. Why should you make such propositions? Why cannot the man be a mighty messenger of God? Why should he be a liar or a lunatic? Again and again in Christian literature, evangelists, they say either he's a liar or an imposter. Is the oppos opposite of liar, imposter, what is it? God is the opposite of God, imposter? Is the opposite of God, lunatic? No. What is the antonym for? God is there. How can you say this or that, this or that? Why can't he be what he claims to be? That he is a messenger of God. And as such, follow him. He says, he is not of me, who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. If you follow me, you will get eternal life. Listen to him, you hearken to him, what he says, what he teaches. And that is salvation. If you don't do that, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There is no heaven for you unless you are better than the Jew. And you can't be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments. Listen to him, follow him, and if you follow him, you can't help being a Muslim. Wa dawan and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Thank you very much, Mr. Vida. What we're going to do at this point in time is for those, and I realize what a terrible trial it is of, of patience just to hold back when you, you really want to get behind one speaker or another. But I do want to thank you for that patience and for making this debate a debate, not a confrontation. What we'd like to offer you the chance of doing now is to have your own part in this. Now, it is impossible to offer to five and a half thousand people the right to participate in a debate by uh, leaving your seat in any form. So what we're going to suggest is this. I'm going to be asking the two speakers in just a moment to speak for a maximum of eight minutes each in rebuttal of each other's position. We are then going to take questions and if there is a question you would like to ask if you could phrase it as courteously as possible and if you would write your question on a piece of paper and pass it to your left until it reaches the aisle and if you are at the last seat right next to the aisle you'll collect the questions that come from your row hold them in your hand and stewards when people have had a chance to do, to do that, will you walk down the aisle and collect the questions? Then stewards, you are to bring those questions down to the rear, behind me here, right down to the rear, uh, where you will be met by a box, or by someone holding a box who will collect the questions. They will then be brought in here and drawn impartially. We'll shuffle them up and uh, if you're fortunate enough to have your question, then that will be asked. We're going to ask you to do that in just one moment. We're going to also say this. Please do not try to leave your seat or come forward. If you want to have a quiet wriggle, now is your opportunity to do it. In about 15 seconds, I'm going to ask Dr. Shirosh to begin his reply. So a moment or two of silence. You can start writing your questions. Please don't leave your seat, just pass them to your left. Have a good wriggle, get rid of uh, any of the cramps or problems that way. <coughs> now may I ask you for silence. Right, 
Can we have complete quiet? Grateful for your courtesy and for your appreciation and respect of Dr. Shirosh. I'm going to ask him if he would come and make his reply, please, to what Mr. Didat has said. Thank you. What a delightful bunch you are, and what a joy it is to stand before you and make replies to my friend, Mr. Didat. Concerning the statement about Jesus saying he was God, I first call your attention to John 13, 13. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Remember, please, if the Queen of England walks in here, she does not have to tell you she is the Queen. Jesus did not have to tell you every time he did something, he was God. And when he answered Philip, he said, you say, show us the Father and it's sufficient. I have been with you so long and you don't know? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Our brother quoted another verse which has the same idea. As to our brother's remarks about the book of Revelation, did not the prophet and the prophets have also dreams? Did not God reveal himself to them in dreams and visions? He speaks through visions and dreams. And it does not come because your stomach is full or empty. But God chooses to do so. And if he chooses to do so, it is so. I also like to remind you of something else. As far as the Trinity is concerned, I think the problem with our Muslim friends is that they don't realize we are just as much against the Trinity of the days of the Arab worlds coming into historical position as they are. You see, there was a group of heretics who from paganism came to Christianity and they thought of Mary as the queen of heaven. God married her and Jesus was born. For God's sake, get this through your mind. Jesus was not the son of God as a man who was born through a sexual experience. It is a spiritual title. He came because he loves you. Stop them. Stop them. Be patient to the end, please. The Merriamas, therefore, are just as wrong as others are wrong. Our faith in the Trinity is in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This world will have you confused because why are we so stuck on making Jesus um, God? Why? For what reason? Yes, he's a miracle baby, so that can make him God. We need to realize that even though people dreamt of God back in the days, it's not like they saw his face. People nowadays, people, people are still dreaming of God now. And they still don't have a face to God because we've never seen God's face. You haven't seen God's face. I haven't. That's why we don't even have portraits of him. Because people take things far. Once we saw, if we saw God's face, we would have him hanging everywhere. And you know that's a fact. So to, let me just sum this up. Let's just accept Jesus for what he was. A messenger of god and that's it stop confusing the crowd stop confusing people just stop confusing anyone that thinks otherwise i mean it's even absurd to think about what do you guys actually think because this debate seems like it was um very interesting and just interesting i would say let me know what you guys think if you've got comments questions anything not questions comments though to make me understand things 
um i'll be more than glad to read your comments if there's something that you want us to react to let us know in the comment section below and yeah make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video